Well, hello there everybody, it's Sally here and a big, huge welcome back to Tuesday Teaching Tips with me, Sally Cathcart. Now, this term, uh, what have I been up to over Easter? I hope you've all had a really, really lovely Easter holiday. I've been on all sorts of conferences and courses where I've been partly presenting, but also trying to absorb things from other people. And you know, there's always so much to learn, isn't there, by listening to other teachers. I love it. Um, so one thing I remembered or was reminded was the importance of smiling in, at, in piano lessons, whether you're teaching online, which many people still are here in the UK, or whether you're teaching face to face. I've been watching myself on some of the videos of lessons I've been making recently, and I look terribly serious, serious Sally. And that's hopeless, I think, because I'm not just giving over the energy enough that I need to be. In comparison, I was watching one of my colleagues on the piano teacher's course, Beata Toika, and I was watching one of the videos of a lesson that she had shared. Oh, and it was just wonderful. She had such a fantastic expression on her face nearly the whole time. I remember to smile sometimes, but I'm not remembering to smile and to keep engaged, keeping the eyes nice and wide and, and, and smiley and positive. Even when we're trying to say things that are maybe a little bit challenging, we can still do it with the correct expression. I don't know about you, but I end up sort of trying to look at the screen in a very puzzled kind of way. So that would be my first thing. Smile. Remember to just actively smile. The second point I wanted to, that I picked up was this idea of action, um, that sitting on a piano stool doing hard cognitive thinking, hard work, um, is really quite challenging and the brain can easily get overloaded. You know, the, the sort of thing, I mean, you've got a student, doesn't matter whether they're young, old, um, beginner, advanced, we all do this. So we're sitting on the piano stool, we're reading something challenging in front of us. And of course, because it's probably challenging to read because it looks quite black, etc. And we maybe don't know it very well. It's also challenging to play technically, and we're we're struggling with that. We've got lots of tension in our body, and our brain is going. Oh, there's only so long, you know, that we can continue that for without it becoming completely counterproductive. So once you've done some hard work in the brain, some hard cognitive brain, the brain needs a release. It needs relaxation. It actually needs to move away from the position it's in. And that goes for your body as well, because your brain and your body, believe it or not, it's all one thing. So I'm remembering to do some action, to get away from the piano stool. Once you recognize the signs of brain overload in your students, get them away from the piano stool. Just do some clapping. Just give them a, a, um, a little clapping game. Maybe it can just be simply improvising some, um, some rhythms or maybe it's improvising something at the piano. You know, try some of Forrest Kinney's beautiful improvisations. Yes, you can do it online as well. You just have to make sure the student is on mute and it works perfectly. They have a lovely time. You have to kind of shut your ears a little. So there we go. Smile, hmm, really important, and action. Do hard work, then get away from the piano stool for one minute. That's all it needs to be. Then back to that piano stool again can make a huge difference to all your lessons. Thank you to everybody who's watching. I can see lots and lots of people out there. I can see Felicity's watching. I've got Dixie. Hello, Dixie. Hello, Jill. Hello, Diane. Loads and loads of people. Thank you all so much for joining me. I shall be back again next week, fingers crossed, for another Tuesday Teaching Tips. And keep smiling. Take some action. Happy teaching. Bye-bye for now.